Subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello everyone, Rahul Shah here trying to make investing accessible and profitable for the average investor. The concept of margin of safety is undoubtedly one of the most important concepts in the field of value investing. Sadly though, it is also one of the most misunderstood. People believe they are following the principles of margin of safety as long as they buy a stock at a discount of at least 20 to 25 percent from its intrinsic value. They don't worry too much about how they are calculating a stock's intrinsic value. I don't think that's the right way to go about it. At least that's not how Benjamin Graham, to whom goes the honor of inventing this concept, wanted you to use it. Now the shrewd operator that he was, Graham was of the view that when it comes to investing or valuing companies, the future is extremely important. However, he was also aware that no one can predict the future accurately on a consistent basis. And this is a classic conundrum in my view. You can neither ignore the future nor can you predict it. So how exactly do you invest if you don't know how to approach the future? Well, Graham was of the view that you should find the middle ground. You should rely on a method that does not involve an accurate appraisal of the future. At the same time, it should keep your capital safe as much as possible. Now allow me to explain this with an example. Imagine that a stock has an earnings power or an earnings capacity of rupees 10 per share and the ideal PE multiple that you'd like to pay for this stock is 10x. Now there are two investors, investor A and investor B. Investor A believes that the earnings capacity of the company will go up to rupees 15 per share over the next two to three years. Therefore, as per him, the stock should command a valuation of rupees 150 per share, say a couple of years from now. Now he is also well aware of the concept of margin of safety. Therefore, he is willing to buy it only at a price of rupees 100 or lower, thus implying a minimum margin of safety of 33%. Company B, on the other hand, has no idea, I beg your pardon, investor B, on the other hand, has no idea what the company will earn two to three years from now. He, however, knows that it's a good quality stock and as per his judgment, future earnings capacity is not going to go down much below rupees 10 per share. He therefore calculates the intrinsic value of the stock to be rupees 100 per share. He also knows the future is essentially uncertain. Hence, he is only willing to buy the stock if it goes below rupees 70 per share. Which of the two investors do you think is relying on the concept of margin of safety the way Graham wanted it? Investor A or Investor B? Well, I'll have to say that it is indeed Investor B. The reason being that Investor A is making a prediction that the stock's earnings capacity would touch rupees 15 per share soon. And the success or failure of his investment depends on this particular prediction. If the earnings capacity does touch rupees 15 per share, he will walk with away. He will walk away with a cool 50% profit over a one to two year period. But what if the earnings capacity does not touch rupees 15 per share and instead falls and goes all the way down to rupees eight per share? <clears throat> well, in that case, investor A may suffer a capital loss of 20% as the stock price may settle at rupees 80 in view of the fallen earnings. Investor B on the other hand may still end up making a profit of 14 to 15% provided the stock fell to rupees 70 or lower and he managed to buy it. Please note that investor A tried to make a definite prediction about the company's future and failed. Investor B did not make any definite prediction about the earnings of the company the way Investor A did. He used his judgment based on the current earnings capacity and assumed that the future earnings capacity may not fall significantly below Rs. 10 per share. The difference in the way both the investors approach the future is subtle, yet it's extremely important from the point of view of understanding margin of safety. Investor A tried to predict the future earnings, whereas Investor B tried to use it as a rough index of what the earnings capacity may look like. 
Besides investor B also tried to preserve capital by assuming that the future could throw up a negative surprise. Capital preservation was not so much on the mind of investor A and he was more about maximizing returns instead of minimizing losses. Therefore, when it comes to real margin of safety, investor B came close to practicing it the way it should be practiced. Hence, he has a better chance of succeeding over the long run. Now, I know this may still sound a little confusing. As I said, the difference between a good margin of safety and a bad one is quite subtle and may take time getting used to. Therefore, let us use a real life example in order to understand this concept better. Now, Gujarat Mineral Development Corporation or GMDC is one of the stocks that I closed in my penny stock service exponential profits recently. It's a debt free company in India, has paid out regular dividends in the past and has been consistently profitable. Over the last seven years, its earnings per share has ranged from as low as rupees 5 per share to rupees 15 per share thus leading to an average earnings power of around rupees 9 per share which is mentioned in the second table to the right i have ignored fi21 as the business was affected by the covid pandemic now i was quite confident that its future average earnings power may not fall significantly below rupees 9 per share this is why i decided to value the company at rupees 130 to rupees 140 per share now why rupees 130 to rupees 140 per share well, because at this valuation, I was earning a return of around 7% to 8% on the average earnings of rupees 9 per share. These compared well with the return I would earn if I invested in a AAA rated corporate bond or any other high quality fixed income instrument. Now, based on a decent margin of safety of at least 33%, buying the stock at close to rupees 90 per share would have been a good idea from the point of view of making an investment. It did offer good safety of principle and carried with it promise of adequate returns. Just the way Graham would have liked it. When I recommended the stock in February 2021, it was trading at a price of Rs. 62. This was more than 50% off its estimate of fair value which I thought was a great bargain. Therefore, I went ahead and recommended the stock enabling my subscribers make an excellent return of 131% in a little over 15 months. I think this was a classic heads I win, tails I don't lose much kind of a situation. Or in other words, this was a stock where the downside was small while the upside was big enough. Please note that I did not try to predict the future here. I used the average earnings as the earnings capacity or the earnings power of the company applied a reasonable P multiple of 13 to 14 X and also applied a margin of safety of 33% so as to minimize the downside in case the earnings fell significantly below rupees 9 per share. And in the end, it worked out wonderfully well for my subscribers. In fact, most stocks that I recommend in my penny stock service follow this template of not trying to predict the future, but valuing the company based on its current earnings power and incorporating a significant margin of safety. And how exactly has this approach worked? Well, I have closed 37 recommendations so far since inception three years ago and out of those 37, 31 of them have been closed in the positive with an average gain of almost 50% per stock. So this is not some theoretical exercise that I am undertaking but instead something that has been applied to real life with encouraging results. Now let us talk about the three penny stocks that as I mentioned in the title of this video may have a small downside and a big upside potential or you can call may have a small downside risk and a big upside potential and may end up giving impressive returns just like GMDC did. Here's the first one of them. Jagran Prakashan Limited, one of India's largest media and communications group. Now, if you leave aside FY21 where earnings were hit because of COVID, the stock has an earnings power of close to Rs 10 per share. Applying a P multiple of around 14x gives an intrinsic value of around Rs 130 to 140 per share. The stock currently trades at nearly half of that, signifying a margin of safety of almost 50% and an upside of almost 100%.
therefore it's a classic small upside but perhaps a big I beg your pardon small downside but perhaps a big upside stock the second penny stock is Arcon International IRCON International which specializes in execution of railway projects the stock has an earnings power of almost rupees 5 per share based on its historical earnings now applying a p multiple of 14x gives an intrinsic value of close to rupees 70 per share the stock has gone up recently from rupees 40 per share to rupees 50 or thereabouts thus narrowing the margin of safety to 25 percent at rupees 40 the margin of safety was more than 30 percent thus satisfying our criteria of margin of safety however even at the current price the stock seems to have a decent upside over the next year or so based on our estimate of its intrinsic value the third and final stock on my list is gujarat industries power again very stable numbers average earnings power of rupees 14 per share and if we give a slightly lower p multiple of say around 12x the intrinsic value comes to around rupees 160 per share the stock currently trades at close to rupees 86 per share implying a big margin of safety and also an upside that's almost two times the current price so those are the three penny stocks with what i think the combination of small downside and a significantly bigger upside jagran prakashan arcon international and gujarat industries power now is the upside in these stocks guaranteed of course not i think no one can guarantee that but what i'm quite confident about is the fact that if you have a group of 15 to 20 such stocks with similar characteristics and if you calculate the margin of safety the way it is highlighted here by taking into account the average earnings of the past few years and not trying to predict the future earnings then i think you have a strong chance of doing well over the long term please note that you can invest in penny stocks in one of the following two ways you can either find a penny stock that will turn into a multi-bagger in few years however finding such stocks is not easy at all you have to take a call on the industry then try to find the right company in that industry run by the right management team and above all you need to buy the stock at attractive valuations getting all of these elements right is very difficult in my view my approach on the other hand does not rely on getting any of these elements right all you have to do is buy a group of stocks with good earnings track record strong balance sheet and where the margin of safety is at least 30 percent based on current and not the future earnings power in fact my method almost eliminates the need to make future projections if your margin of safety is big enough you are well protected against any adverse changes in the future and can end up with good results even if the future is slightly better than the past the method is simple has a strong logic to it and above all backed by practical experience going back many years this brings me to the end of this video do share your feedback and please subscribe to the channel in case you haven't already i'll see you again next time happy investing